Today, I'm going to try to beat a hardcore Nuzlocke of Pokemon Black 2 with only Fire-type Pokemon. Now, ever since Charizard hit the stage, the Fire-type has been a much-beloved one in the Pokemon fandom, and for good reason. I mean, offensively, these things are powerful. However, they do have a bit of a struggle with defenses and can be quite slow overall. With that said, as always, Pokemon Black 2 and White 2 provide a great variety of Fire-types to work with, although with a rules against legendaries and mythicals, that will cut off both Rashiram and Victini. And everybody's favorite. Heat more. Okay, seriously, no one remembers poor Heat more, as you can only get it in Twist Mountain, which opens up in the post game. Let's see if we can be Pokemon Black 2 with only the first fire type that we find on each route, no items in battle, level caps in place, and the battle mode on set at all times. But first, I'd like to take you on a journey to Honkai Star Rail, today's sponsor and a new multi platform space fantasy RPG from Hoyoverse, the makers of Genshin Impact. Ever since I was introduced to the Honkai world, I've been enamored by its creativity and world building. And with a new game out that involves space travel across different worlds with unique landscapes and stories, and free exploration as you strive to stop Nanook, an eon who regards the universe as a fallacy and civilization as a plague. I can't tell you how excited I am, and it's free to play for both mobile and PC with game data being shared between clients so you can play anytime, anywhere. The game features an immersive story, and with the turn-based combat mechanism, battles are also an invigorating experience. The rich strategic battling brings a level of diversity to the gameplay where different combat combinations create different experiences as you go along. The game officially launched on April 25th of this year and there's nothing like getting to play as your favorite character. And with exquisite and gorgeous attire, detailed and vivid expressions, you'll definitely be able to find a style that suits you from dozens of characters, each possessing their own unique flair. Not only that, but the cutscenes are carefully crafted with professional cinematography and animation direction which will grant players the same level of audiovisual experience as a top-notch animation or TV series. Honkai Star Rail is out now. Check the pinned comment or link in my description to download the game. It's going to be one of the breakout RPGs of 2023, so you don't want to miss it. Alright, here we go. Pokemon Black 2, one of my favorite games in the franchise. Oh, uh, apparently it's winter time in game? Great, my fire type team is gonna love me. Oh look, it's our mom. What's she talking about? What now? She's already here? Oh, for Pete's sake, you never change. Wait a minute, I don't get it. Who's Pete? After finding out about our new stepfather, it's time to choose our starter Pokemon from Bianca. And this is one of those rare instances in which we get to actually keep it, as I pick Tepig, the fire starter. I name him Habanero, and Bianca proceeds to go off about how Pokedexes are being handed out like candy these days. Yeah, them Pokedex distribution rates. The market is pretty crazy right now. Am I doing small talk right? Before getting to check out Habanero's stats, Hugh challenges us to battle, and with his Oshawott not yet having water moves, it wasn't too threatening, as lowering his defense with Tail Whip off the bat helped us to make it through with above half health remaining. For winning, we get awarded with some Pokeballs from Bianca, meaning our run has officially begun. Checking out Habanero, it turns out he has a relaxed plus defense and minus speed nature, which isn't great, as a future Embor needs as much speed as he can get. Oh hey look, that guy certainly looks like a fire type. Can we catch him? Up ahead of the Flossessi Ranch, in true rival fashion, Hugh won't leave us alone, but this has me fearing the moment that he gets water moves, as I don't know how we'll deal with the future Samurott at the moment. Oh great, we learned Odor Sleuth. Wow, thank goodness, we're saved. Running into a Team Plasma Grunt, we- Ah. <sighs> Why is it that both of the Gen 5 games begin with Pokemon abuse? Regardless, this dude gives us the Frustration TM, which increases in damage the less your Pokemon like you, which might be good early on. Habanero hates my guts. In Alder's backyard, I find this massive cliff, and what Pokemon could have Wait a minute, that's the exact shape of his hair. What gel does he use? Goodness gracious. <laughs> To bribe us into not telling anybody about his anger management headbutting problem, Audrey gives us some Oran berries, and yeah, I'll take it. We need them. It's time for the first gym of the game, the Aspersia City one. Habanero performs pretty well against the trainers in here, as they mainly have their Pokemon go for stat-lowering moves like crazy. You know, as a trainer school-themed gym, these kids sure know nothing. With that said, it's time to face their teacher, Charon, the former rival from the original Black and White, and a normal-type specialist now. He leads with a Patrat, and I go for Defense Curl right away. 
away. At this point, I know the AI likes to kind of match your stat changes, and baiting him into it works as he uses workup to raise his attack. The good thing is, we can then take him down in a couple frustrations and tackles, and after he uses a potion, he does hit us with a tackle after we barely don't KO him, but with us at plus one defense over him, it doesn't do much and we can take him down. Next is his Lily Pup, and here's the benefit of all of that. Not only is he going to try to bulk up again, but he's a fresh Pokemon, meaning our defense way outdoes his attack, and he's just playing catch-up. He did manage to hit us to 17 HP twice after our berry healed us the first time, but ultimately, a final frustration does the job and wins us our first badge. Quite solid, and we also get a workup TM of our own for winning, which should come in handy. Not only that, but outside the gym, we run into Bianca again, who comes loaded with great things for us like the return TM, the friendship equivalent of frustration, and also the sea gear, which is gonna come in clutch in a little bit. Up ahead, like a complete idiot, I ran into a Riolu battle and realized I forgot to heal from the gym. Oh no. But amazingly, he had hit us below a third, thereby activating our blaze ability and increasing the power of our fire moves, so we made it through on just 8 HP in the red. Holy, that was close. After that scary encounter, we make it to Verbank City where the next gym is. Running into a girl in the Pokemon Center, she starts quizzing us and says, Oh really? In my view, you're a person with common sense. You underestimate my power! Oh my, we'd better be careful, these sidewalks are icy as heck. Well, the broken leg and concussion were sure worth it as we can pick up a hidden salt scarf here to boost normal moves. While grinding up for the gym, Habanero evolves into a pig knight, now getting some extra coverage in the form of fighting type. Wicked. Along the way, we can pick up the Thief TM for type boosting items, and also get the Rock Smash TM from some corporate overlord who wanted us to whip his employees into shape. More important than that, though, is the fact that in the Verbank Complex, we have a new encounter, except it could be one of two things, a Magby or a Growlithe, and it ends up being a Magby. Either one is fine, really, but Magby is quite cool as it's exclusive to Black 2. I name him Fatali, and he ends up having a gentle, plus special defense and minus defense nature, which I'll take. Hitting up the Verbank gym, I realized Habanero was getting close to the level cap. Also, I love how the gym leader can't hear you, so you have to literally shut the other people up. That's actually the gym puzzle. So I tested Fatality out a little bit to split the XP, and, uh... I kid you not, we missed Fire Spin twice in a row, got poisoned, and then got disabled. My stubbornness would not allow me to live that down, so thankfully Fatality got the redemption and took that damn thing down before Habanero could clean up the coughing. Hopefully the gym leader battle itself is better, as here comes Roxy, the poison type expert. The only real danger I'm seeing here is getting poisoned by coughing and then getting hit by double power Venoshock, but I get Habanero out there with flame charge right away to increase our speed. Fortunately enough, her coughing kept using tackle instead of smog for some reason, so we could take her down in five attacks after she had healed. I mean, I'll take it. Her ace then comes in Venipede, which thankfully due to its part bug typing is weak to fire. So two stab super effective flame charges smash her to the ground and win us the second badge. I had a Petra Berry attached to heal poison, so I think we were pretty safe either way. Oh no, not you. Anyone but you. <laughs> I don't want to do it. I... Wait, what? That's a fake building? Alright, nobody told me this was going to be the f***ing Matrix up in here. Uh, oh no, these poor people. Two Sunkerns against this team? You <laughs> Hijacking a ship, we arrive in the biggest city in the region, Castilia, which is always loaded with great items for us. For example, we can grab a crucial charcoal item to boost fire moves from this girl, and for once we weren't lying to her, we did actually choose Tepig. And I found this girl who says she's a spy tasked with finding out more about the CEO of her company. What in the world? I don't think I've seen this before. Well, with spies everywhere, I suppose it's time to go underground, as we can pick up the leftovers item in the sewers. Yum. Not only that, but we can hit up the place where Castelia City began, Castelia Park. We may not need the miracle seed that was here, but this is actually the location of our next encounter. As a 5% chance, it took a while, but eventually we did find it, an Eevee. It took me until the last damn chance I had, as it got poisoned and we caught it just before it died, but I name him Chili, and he has a quirky neutral nature. Hopefully we'll find a Firestone soon. The encounters aren't done yet though, as we can go north of Castelia to a small section of Route 4 that's open in order to find a Darumaka, which I catch and nickname Gibraltar. Gibraltar has a naive plus speed and minus special defense nature, and anything plus speed is good in my books. After scrambling around to find some more Pokemon, we finally meet the requirement of 40 scene to grab the Eviolite to boost the defenses of unevolved Pokemon. Sweet. With that in 
hand, I'm feeling more comfortable about the Castelia Gym as I can attach it to Habanero and have him go nuts against the trainers. There were some rock Pokemon in here, but of course all the bug and grass types got demolished. The third gym leader is Berg, the bug specialist, and I have a bit of a plan here. He leads with a Swadloon, and I get Gibraltar out there. Also, for some reason, I thought the level cap was 23 here when it's 24 in reality, but oh well. One four times super effective fire punch would have ended him right off the bat, but we missed the damn thing. Then he hit a string shot to lower our speed and hit a razor leaf. We then missed our next one too, so we got hit again before we finally landed one to take him out. I suppose I should tell you Gibraltar has Hustle, an ability which raises his attack at the cost of some accuracy, but that was still crazily unlucky. In comes Dwebble next, a scary little guy as it smacks us with super effective smackdown right off the bat and we get brought below half and we miss again. Okay, you know what? Forget this. Here comes Habanero tanking the next two attacks thanks to his part fighting type and thus begins the long grind with flame charge as Dwebble is ridiculously bulky apparently. Because of our speed boost, he eventually starts using rock polish to raise his own which allowed us to survive below half in the end with the help of our berry. But surviving that is all we needed as his final Pokemon, Levani, is also four times weak to fire, and with the infinite flame charge speed boosts we had, we outspeed even it for the victory. Alright, that was way more complicated than I was expecting, but we got through it. Back on Route 4, we're impeded by a bunch of Crustles, as if we haven't had enough bad experiences with their evolutionary line, and Chorus is here, who challenges us to battle. He has caused some major trouble for us in other runs, as Steel could be a huge challenge for some typings, but this time around, we got some redemption. As Gibraltar did get paralyzed, but the Eviolite helped us tank all of his attacks so we could demolish it with Fire Punch. Then his Clank only got a gear grind on us to not even half before a single hustle boosted Fire Punch eviscerated it. Much better on the accuracy there, buddy. Exploring the Rue, we can get a great TM, Dig, which is still 80 power in this gen, and we can grab the soft sand from the shady dude in a suit in the desert to complement it. And while we're at it, nice suit, dude. Not only that, but there's a hidden firestone in this Rue that not a lot of people know about, and boy oh boy is that ever good news for us. One of the houses also nets us the wide lens to boost accuracy, should be helpful for Gibraltar actually. And as I always preach about, Join Avenue up ahead is incredible. Yes, you get to start your own business and whatnot, but it also nets us a whole bunch of wicked items as you go along, even including Firestones. With that, we arrive at the next gym destination, Nimbasa City, which, as a giant amusement park gambling mega city, I'm sure we won't get dopamine overload from. Ah, uh, if only there was a way to learn about dopamine detoxes. Well, with three badges in hand, it's time to activate our sea gear, which allows us to visit the dream world. That's right, we can get a new encounter within it, and I go for one that we otherwise lost out on due to it and Megby only appearing in one route. Growlithe, who I nicknamed Tigerpaw and who has a lax plus defense and minus special defense nature. Hidden abilities can be great, but uh, Justified is definitely not better than Intimidate. Oh well. I was shocked to see how bad the Arcanine line's move pool is in this gen 2, but we'll figure some the note. Before anything though, I head up the northern gate to get the Macho Brace to double the EVs that we can get as we're gonna need them. But this gate also leads us to another encounter location, the Lost Lorn Forest. Problem being, this encounter is only available in Shaking Grass Bots and is just a 10% chance to find within them. Oh boy. A long grind later and we find one, a Panseer which I catch and name Jolo and who has a lax plus defense and minus special defense nature which is meh. Heading back to the city we... oh. After all that, I could have just stolen this one. Either way, we could use a Firestone to evolve Jolo into a Simi Seer, which, as much hate as the elemental monkeys get, is actually really solid offensively at least, with great speed and can be a mixed attacker too. The Nimbasa Gym is up next, and I decide to try out Jolo, who has insane damage output with his newly learned Flame Burst, but ridiculous paralysis hacks prevented us from getting the sweep, but Gibraltar could come in and finish the job. I can't imagine the monkeys too happy about a gorilla showing him up. Powering up even more for the gym leader, Chili evolves into a Flareon from a Join Avenue Firestone, a Pokemon that I rarely get to use, and right at the level cap of 30, Fatali also evolves into a Magmar, who, now that I think of it, could be an awesome Eviolite candidate. The fourth gym leader is Elisa, the Electric-type trainer, and... Alright, mother Almost the entire fanbase hates you and your brothers, so it's time to show your stuff. All my theory crafting for this battle told me one thing. We just need to power through it. Amazingly, we for once have something that can outspeed Emulga as Flame Burst hits it to a quarter before she volts switches out for a third and brings in Flaffy. A Flame Burst then hits it and gets a crit out of nowhere. 
Uh, that was not part of the plan, as I had hoped to get Eviolite Magmar out there after I assumed Jolo would get paralyzed. In comes Emolga again though, and with the outspeed, that means we can take it down as well. Okay then. I did not think Jolo would still be out here, as in comes Zebstrika next, and it has Pursuit, so we really can't switch. Then she hits us with one, and gets a crit. Well, crap. Now I really can't switch, as Flame Burst hit her for less than half, and then, yup, Jolo gets outsped anyway, and goes down to avoid switch. Well, we tried to give him some redemption. Here, I get our newly evolved Fatality out there with the Eviolite, and he absolutely eats up Zemstrike's Volt Switches, tanking two above half and hitting two Flame Bursts in return for the KO and our fourth badge. One day, the Elemental Monkeys will redeem themselves, but today is not that day. Hey, hey Sylph, y you like Pokemon too, right? <laughs> yeah, me too. Uh, come here. There's Pokemon over here. There's Pokemon over here, Sylph. So just, just follow me here. Huh. Well, this is interesting. What's all this about? Oh, no. Are you one of those f***ing van life Instagrammers? Up ahead stands... or sits, I suppose. Heartbreaker Charles, who challenges us to a rotation battle, and man oh man, I could hardly imagine a team more threatening than this for a fire team. And even Sigliff is brutal for Pig Knight. But incredibly, we made it through Deathless somehow, thanks to our elite strats, especially using Flame Charge at opportune moments, to be able to outspeed and slam the Sigliff when it got rotated back in. Whew. Well, we've made it to Driftvale City where the next gym is, and... This is actually where the first move tutor is, and boy oh boy are these dudes ever going to be useful moving forward. More important than even them right now though is this dude who gives us the air balloon item which I think might single-handedly be able to make this run possible for us. The hall then ends with another great item, the expert bell to boost super effective moves even further. With that, it's time for the scariest location in the game, the Driftvale City Gym. The traders themselves were relatively manageable, especially with Fatality having faint attack to help take care of the ball toys. But but the trainers aren't who I'm afraid of. It's the fifth gym leader, Clay, the ground type specialist. Yup, with our fire team. I spent forever theory crafting for this, and one plan came to mind. He leads with a croc rock, and I get Fatality out there to start. And here, we sort of have two decision trees in my plan. I use Confuse Ray, and either he hits himself in Confusion, in which case that gives us the range for the Flame Burst KO, and we try to hurt Sand Slash bad when it comes in before switching into Pig Knight with the Air Balloon, or he doesn't, and I have to switch into Pig Knight because our speed will be lowered by Bulldoze, and then power up with Work Up while he's confused and tries to break our Balloon but he does hit himself. All right, let's go for it. As I'm not kidding, without that damage, Flame Burst would not have KO'd. But he brings in Excadrill next instead of Sand Slash, which I was not expecting. Well, my calcs tell me we might be able to one-hit KO here, and we do. Amazing. In comes his final Pokemon, Sand Slash. Realizing our situation, I go for the Confuse Ray strat again, and he hits himself on the first turn. I then hit a Flame Burst, which does big damage, but he survives on a sliver then hits a stab super effective bulldoze to half thanks to our Eviolite, but our speed is lowered. I know Clay is going to heal here though, so I stay in as Flame Burst then brings him to a quarter. Problem is, he'll now outspeed us, so I switch into Habanero, hoping to bait Bulldoze again, and he does go for it, so our air balloon makes us immune. He then hits a Crush Claw to pop it, and we hit a Flame Charge, and it gets a crit to take him down. Well then, I mean the whole plan was that Flame Charge would raise our speed anyway so we could take him down on the second turn, but I'll take that one. Five badges, and I can't believe that actually worked. Next up is every Pokemon fan's dream, the Pokemon World Tournament. And for once, I'm not feeling too nervous about this, as we have good levels over all our competitors, and Fatality with the Eviolite is straight up incredible. Being able to take down even threats like Duot without much of a fuss, and sweeping through the rest of Hugh's team now that our special attack EVs are so high. Not only that, but Chorus being the final challenge really wasn't much of a challenge at all. Oh hey look, we won the World Tournament! Am I supposed to retire as a trainer and abandon my 25 year long fans now? Docked ships sure look lonely. Yeah, it does look kinda lonely, huh? Let's check up on Mr. Shippy Boy and keep him company. Oh, what the lonely my now we do get to do something very cool here. Near the Pokemon World Tournament, there's a secondary entrance to the Relic Passage. And after a long trek through, we arrive at the- Oh wait, that's just a room filled with sand. That actually kind of scared me. I thought I did something wrong, but I guess it's the next one. Yup, there we go. The room with none other than Full Corona. 
which we eventually catch as our next encounter and name Viper. Viper has a rash plus special attack and minus special defense nature, pretty good, and the silver powder attached to boost bug moves. Nice. It has a brutal move pool at the moment and that'll take some time to fix, but still one of the coolest Pokemon of all time. We eventually get to Charge Stone Cave and this is where we'd have to search for Fire Stones, but there are a bunch of other cool items in here too, so it makes the haul worth it. Although at one point, I got a Fire Gem. You got me. Picking up a magnet along the way through the cave, we then arrive in Miss Stralton City where the next gym is. Uh, I've been watching the show Manifest lately, and I've gotta say, being here is triggering some kind of stress response, I'm not gonna lie. Way up north is the Celestial Tower, and you wouldn't think it, but it's where our next encounter can be found as we find a Litwick, which I decide to chuck my Master Ball at since I nearly killed the damn thing, and I name him Reaper. Reaper has a bold plus defense and minus attack nature. Pretty good. And unfortunately, it does take past this level cap to even evolve it for the first time, so I'm gonna leave him in the box for now. The tower also nets us the Will-O-Wisp TM, pretty great for a fire team. While training for the next gym, we have a Wicked Evolution as our Gibraltar evolves, into a monster, Darmanitan. A Pokemon we haven't used before in our Nuzlocke, so this should be interesting indeed. Habanero feels left out apparently, so he decides to join the party and evolves into a beastly Embor. Quite the power-ups. The party is not over yet though, as I got Tiger Paw to the cap right at level 39, so he learns Crunch, as he can't get it otherwise, meaning we can finally allow him to evolve into an Arcanine. Wild. We can also head back to the PWT to have the tutor teach him Thunderfang, which should provide some great coverage. The Mistralton Gym is upon us, and after enduring the hell that is the air currents flinging us around everywhere, and having Gibraltar go nuts with the sheer force boosted fire punch which evidently has devastating power it's time for the next gym leader skyla the flying expert and i think we have the perfect counter for her she leads with a swoobat and i get tiger paw on the field immediately i hit her with the expert belt boosted crunch and wham one hit ko in comes her swana next which would normally be a massive threat but yup swana meet expert belt four times super effective thunderfang then in comes skarmory and because of sturdy it survives a flamethrower but but once she heals, I hit with a Thunderfang to break it, and we got a crit and paralysis combo, by the way. Then a final attack earns us the victory. Well then, our team's starting to develop some coverage and power. <laughs> Professor Juniper then says, I suppose I should tell you why I brought you out to the desert. All right, I've seen this happen before. Easy there, Walter White. In Lentimus, we can pick up a free Fire Stone, much better than having to search for it, and we can also hit up the Pokemon Center to get the spell tag from some creepy late... And talk about creepy, behind this haunted house, we can also grab the Shadow Ball TM2, Wicked, before reluctantly entering. What the hell, Mom? Dad? Abra? Where are you? What the ever-loving flying f was that? Well, hopefully enduring all of this nonsense is worth it as we can grab a much-needed dusk stone and get the heck out of here. Hmm. Yeah, I, I think my team likes the White 2 version of Twist Mountain better than this. In Undela Town, we have another rival battle with Hugh, and I was taking a while kind of figuring out how we could beat him, but it eventually came to me. He leads with a now evolved on Pheasant as I lead with Fatality. Knowing he usually tries to use Detect, I go for Sunny Day, and the plan works. Now, I switch in Tiger Paw as Air Slash doesn't do much on us. I can now Thunderfang that thing, and it barely doesn't KO, but does paralyze, so a Flamethrower finishes the job. In comes Samuron next, and now I can hit it with Thunderfang, and we got a crit anyway. Well then, I had set up the sun purposely so that his water attacks wouldn't do much, but that works too, as his final Pokemon, Simisage, gets annihilated by a stab, super effective, expert build, and sun boosted 95 power flamethrower. Poor thing. Those of you who have seen our dark run in this game, you'll know why I have to challenge Gentleman Stonewall here, and how cathartic it was being able to exterminate his damn bug and his furry friend end with Gibraltar's overwhelming power. Good riddance. What the... Pff, yeah, uh, buddy, you don't want to do this, trust me. At level 41, I can finally have Reaper evolve into a Lampent, and then take it one step further with the Dust Stone to fully evolve him into a Chandelure. For the Ghost coverage, I think I'm going to replace Chili for now, as he's outclassed by our other Pokemon anyway. In no time, we hit up the Opelousa Gym, a Dragon-type one, and making it to the top, we can challenge the 7th Gym Leader, Drayden. I have a devious plan for this man. He leads with a Dredagon, and I lead with Gibraltar, and go for Belly Drum to maximize our attack at the cost of half health, 
health, but with our citrus berry, we can then restore health to about three quarters and then tank a crunch on 60 HP. The crit risk was definitely worth it, I'd say, as now we don't have to worry about Dragon's Fire Resistance as a plus six attack Darmanitan with 120 power superpower can sweep through his entire team with relative ease. Well, that's one way to get your seventh badge. It's time for the giant flying pirate ship that shoots ice out at major metropolises or whatever. And oh no, who's gonna rescue us? My almighty Haxorus, go! Save the universe! Okay, Zinzalin, the Team Plasma Sage, has an unfortunate kind of team. For him, I mean. Cryogonal and Weavile had absolutely no chance against a savage beast like Gibraltar. Also, he complains about it being cold and then says he wants the region to be covered in the splendor of ice. Is this man okay? Trying to get through the gate up ahead, we get stopped by... Halt! The tube line bridge is currently undergoing a test to see how many people it can hold. Why did I imagine infinite people crowding up a bridge, eagerly waiting to see if it will collapse? Passing through the beautiful marine tube, my team seemed very uncomfortable. No idea why. A bit unconventional, but I actually headed all the way back to the first town, Aspersia, for one reason. With Surf, we can now grab the Energy Ball TM, which I have a feeling is going to be very helpful moving forward. The eighth and final gym is upon us, the Humalau Gym. Now, although the typing is horrifying, Tigerpaw was at least able to take us through the trainers with Expert Bell Thunderfang, but the eighth gym leader, Marlin, the Water Specialist, is another matter entirely. He just has to lead with a Water and Rock Pokemon that has Sturdy of all things doesn't he? Well, I lead with Fatality regardless and go for Confuse Ray. I figure if he hits himself, it'll break sturdy, but he doesn't and Smackdown hits us and does over half even through Eviolite. Uh, I thought he'd do less than half. Oh no. I have no choice though as I stay in and get the sun up, thinking if he gets through Confusion, he might go for Scald now, but he hits himself. Thank goodness. Here I switch into Reaper and he snaps out of Confusion, but went for Shell Smash. We should still outspeed though and with the Confusion hit, Sturdy is now broken. So four times damage Energy Ball takes him down. Alright, one threat down. In comes Waylord next, and with the Expert Bell, this should do good damage, but it actually gets the one-hit KO. Okay, that surprised me. His final Pokemon is Jellicent, and we have Stab Super Effective Expert Bell Shadow Ball, but it barely doesn't KO on what must be 1 HP. Seriously, I thought the game glitched for a second. Then hits an ominous wind, but Reaper tanks it on a third and can smash him once more for the KO and the win. Alright, I wasn't quite expecting to get through Deathless, but I think that Confusion strat was actually pretty safe, statistically speaking. Next up, the Plasma Frigate, as it's time to do some stealth missions. Hey, what are you doing back here? Let me see some eyes. Uh, how do you see me? No, seriously, how did that guy not see me? Regardless, our quiet steps net us a neat item, the Magmorizer. Huge. Trade evolving with the Magmorizer attached nets us a powerful Magmortar. I'm gonna miss Eviolite like Magmar, but this thing just might be worth it. Our next double battle with Zinzolin had Hughes Samurott live on just 1 HP. Uh, sh should I just kill it so it's no longer a threat? Alright, fine, we'll take the high road and rescue the legendary Kiram instead. Our next challenge, the final battle with Colrus, the weird plasma scientist dude. Well, let's test a fully evolved Fatality out. He leads with an Eviolite Sturdy Magneton, and I go for Confuse Ray again, knowing it could not only help to break his Sturdy, but also prevent him from paralyzing us with Thunder Wave. But he breaks through and lands one regardless, although I did have a Cherry Berry attached. Not good though, as now his later Magnezone can do the same thing. Suddenly, he snaps out of Confusion on the very next turn and paralyzes us again, and I had gone for Flamethrower, hoping he'd have damaged himself by now. Ah. How in the world? He then heals, and we stay paralyzed. What is this battle? He then Volt switches, great, and goes into Magnezone, but we land the faint attack at least. This allows me to then tank a flash cannon and respond with the flamethrower KO. Sheesh. In comes Metang next, and it hits a rock slide low, and flinches us. I have no words. I have to switch, so I go into Gibraltar here, who couldn't have handled Magnezone, so I guess this kinda works out, as a Fire Punch takes down Metang, his Clink Clang after that, and then for his BEM, I knew we needed the extra power, so I slammed him with a Flare Blitz, and our berry helped us from the recoil. In comes the damn Magneton again, and I hit him to Sturdy with Fire Punch, then get paralyzed, then hit low by Volt Switch, but because he can't pivot, I hit a final fire punch to win the battle. That was insanely unlucky all around. Should have been a sweep. 
Okay, now this is the kind of setup I feel I need when making videos. One of the wildest sequences in Pokemon history then begins as Getsus tries to literally kill us, and comes back out of nowhere to save us, and then Getsus fuses legendaries together to create a ridiculously powerful Pokemon, which we then have to battle with the same Pokemon that we want to lead with against him. I had Chandelure out there, and we hit Kiram with a Flame Burst, which doesn't even do half. Then it ravages us with a Fusion Bolt of all things to a third. Goodness gracious. Gracious. Here, I switch into Habanero, though, who gets hit by Dragon Breath and paralyzed. Why? I have no real choice, though, so I stay in. And he goes for Slash, but no crit, so we land an Arm Thrust. And we hit all five of them to just give us the KO range. Habanero, you complete legend. What a debut for our fully evolved starter. Well, it's time for a battle that I'm quite scared of. Getsis, the leader of Team Plasma with an extraordinarily diverse team. Here goes nothing. He leads with a Kafagrigus, and I get Reaper out. A single Expert Belt boosted Shadow Ball thankfully does the trick, as that thing can be a nuisance. Then, in comes Seismitoad. The biggest threat you could imagine for our team, yes, but this is exactly what I hope to bait out, as now an Energy Ball is four times super effective against it and gets the KO. But, in comes Drapion next, and knowing it would go for Night Slash, I switch in Tiger Paw, whose attack then gets raised by Justified. Amazing, as now I go for a normal gem boosted return, but forgot the normal gem apparently. I left the silk scarf on, didn't I? Damn it. As we now thankfully survive an earthquake and can take him down with another, but my plan is a little shaken now as in comes Hydreigon. I decide to switch into Habanero, and we get smashed below half with Dragon Rush, even after leftovers. Oh no, that's not what my calcs told me. I should have put a Citrus Berry on, but we only had so many. We literally cannot send anything else to take two of those in a row, so I just have to hope for the 75% accuracy Dragon Rush miss, and we get it, so we land an Arm Thrust, and we got a crit during it, but not enough as it cuts off at 3. Not good, as I know he'll heal now, but I decide to take the healing opportunity opportunity to switch into Gibraltar. This way, I can outspeed and land the superpower, and it does enough to one-hit KO that thing. In comes Electros next, a Pokemon with no weaknesses, and my calcs tell me Flare Blitz should KO, but it doesn't somehow, and he nails us with an Acrobatics, but Gibraltar tanks it on just 23 HP in the red before his berry, and then can Fire Punch it to the grave. His final Pokemon is then a Toxicroak, which I know has priority Sucker Punch, so I switch into Fatality, and he not only went for Poison Jab instead for some reason, but poisoned us as well to bring us below half. But our flame body did burn him. Oh man, with his attack now lowered, I'm comfortable getting Viper out there to hit a few gusts and end the battle. Hands down, one of the wildest battles we've had. Despite the craziness, I'm proud of the plans that we did execute well. A trip in the beautiful Route 23 has us arrive at the house that we've needed most all along, where this guy gives us the Flamethrower TM. I can't believe they locked that so late game. Nearing the Victory Road gate, we run into none other than N, who gives us the Waterfall HM, which we're actually gonna make use of. Before then though, I can't resist entering the gorgeous Victory Road gate. Feels good, man. We've earned this. Heading way back to Route 14 near Andela, we could do something pretty cool now that we have Waterfall to navigate upstream. This route eventually takes us to a place that not many know about, the Abundant Shrine. The grass here hosts our final encounter, which ends up being a Vulpix, which I catch and nickname Bonnet. Bonnet has a quirky, neutral nature, and we can immediately evolve it into a Ninetales with a Firestone. Unfortunately, Ninetales is outclassed by our other Mons, and if it had the Drought Hidden ability, we'd definitely bring it moving forward, but it's good to have just in case, and so all my fellow Ninetales fans get some love. It's time for a daunting trip through Victory Road, our final path, and at the end, one last Last challenge awaits before the league, a battle with our rival, Hugh. Now, I spent a long time trying to figure out just how this battle could be possible, but his Super Lux Scope Lens on Pheasant lead, combined with Earthquake, Bufalant, and Samrod, of course, made everything not quite work out in my head. But, I think there is one answer here. I lead with Gibraltar against him, and figuring he'll go for Swagger, I use Belly Drum, and he does, but I attach to Person Berry so it gets rid of confusion. Now, I can freely smash him with the Fire Punch to KO, then Bufalant gets smashed with Super Power, the same goes for his Samurott, and finally his Simi Sage. Well, was there ever really any hope for it? Alright, that made a nearly impossible looking battle actually quite easy. With that, we've arrived at our final destination, the Pokemon League. After fulfilling the rest of our EVs,
keys and picking up any remaining items and TMs we need, it's time for the Unova Region Elite Four. The first Elite Four member is Chantal, the Ghost-type expert, and for her, we have the perfect answer in the form of Reaper the Chandelure, as I can attach the expert belt on him and with a base 145 special attack with a stab 80 power move and good speed, we can sweep through every single one of her Pokemon, not taking any damage in the process. That's definitely a good start. Up next is Grimsley, the Dark-type trainer. With an Intimidate Ground-type Crocodile, I knew we needed to do some setup work, but a Lipard with the Tract makes that a bit complicated. I decided to lead with Reaper, the only way I could see this working strangely enough, but I misremembered our nature apparently as we get outsped and smashed with Night Slash, but thankfully no crit, so we land a burn on it. Here, I can now switch into Fatality, who can tank attacks now that her attack is lowered, and I can get off a Confuse Ray on it. With Lipard severely crippled now, I feel safe getting Gibraltar out there as he hits himself in confusion. Now, I can set up Belly Drum with our plus speed nature, and our Citrus Berry heals us up before he gets an attract off through confusion. Ugh. He then full restores though, and we make it through a track to annihilate it with Fire Punch. From here, since all of his Pokemon are Dark type, I can outspeed and smash every single one of them with superpower, with even Crocodile's Intimidate only bringing us to plus 5 attack. Yup, negligible as we sweep through him. The third Elite Four member is Caitlyn, the Psychic type expert. Her team is incredibly bulky, so I know we need as much damage output as possible without risking getting hit by her Shadow Ball attacks. So, I go in with Viper this time. She leads with a Yawn Musharna, so I needed to obliterate that thing as soon as possible with a stab super effective expert belt signal beam which does do the trick. In comes a big threat next though, Sigilyph. Switching into a crit would wreck any of our mons anyway so I know we need to risk one as a flamethrower does two thirds, then she hits one, and we survive below half before taking her out on the next turn. Whew. That was the only risk we needed to take as Viper's raw power is now able to take down her Gothitelle and even Reuniclus with Signal Beam from there. Wow, surely we're not just gonna sweep through the entire Elite Four, right? Well, you'd be right, we're not going to, as up next is Marshall and his team... Oh boy, terrifying, with rock moves everywhere and sturdy to top it off. Not only that, but there's no way to set up on his lead throw as it has guts and has speed lowering super effective moves like Rock Tomb and Bulldoze. After a while of theory crafting, it's time to go in with our best plan, leading with Fatality. With the Expert Belt, our newly taught Psychic does three quarters, then it hits a Rock Tomb for less than half, but with the speed drop. I know we should still outspeed though, and we do, taking that thing down. Then, in comes Conkelder, a complete beast, but my calcs tell me Psychic might just KO, but it barely doesn't end the red before his berry, then he slams us with Hammer Arm, and Fatality, well, has a fatality. Rest in peace, buddy. Here, I send in Tiger Paw, though, who can easily KO with Flamethrower from there. In comes Sock with Sturdy Necks, so I hit him below half with Flamethrower. Then, surprisingly, he goes for Payback, which gives us the Justified boost. Interesting. As a return, then knocks him out from there. In comes his final Pokemon, though, a wickedly fast and powerful Mian Xiao, but I think I have the perfect answer. As predicting the massive power high jump kick, I switch in Reaper, who's immune. And it works, and he gets massive recoil damage, then we can land a Psychic to take take him out and win the battle. An unfortunate loss of Fatality, but that was pretty much our best bet. Well, it's time. The final battle, the champion of the Unova region, Iris, who has a ridiculously powerful and versatile team. And boy oh boy did I ever strategize a lot for this one, as she has a Haxorus with Earthquake and Dragon Dance, which also resists fire moves. But in the end, something special came to mind, as I realized with the level cap now at 59, I can use a rare candy to level up Viper right to then, where he learned Quiver Dance. With Iris leading with a Hydreigon, that means we could set one up and raise our special defense, tanking Surf really well now. A crit would limit the number that we can get off, so I play it safe and get two up, then smash her with super effective stab signal beam for the instant KO. Drudagon then comes out, and with plus two speed and special attack, signal beam decimates it too. Then, for Archeops, I switch into our move tutor tot Giga Drain, which is neutral, and with its frailty, it does enough and gives us huge health back. Wicked. Then, Agron, well, there was no hope for it as Flamethrower burns it to a crit. A hugely bulky Lapras then comes out next, and this is exactly why we needed Giga Drain, as it gets the one hit KO even on that thing. This is unbelievable. In comes her final Pokemon though, Haxorus. I go for Signal Beam, and it survives on 1 HP due to its Focus Sash, but as I was 
hoping? We baited her into raising her stats with Dragon Dance due to our increased stats. She then full restores, but we still outspeed due to our insane boost and knock out her final Pokemon as Focus Sash is a consumable item and only gets one use. Viper, you are a complete legend. We did it. We beat a Pokemon Black 2 Hardcore Nuzlocke with only fire types and I can't tell you how fun that was. I thought fire types would just be all offensive power to make up for relative frailty, but this run really showed me that you can strategize with them quite a lot. MVP goes to our late Fatality the Magmortar as he killed it with the Ephialitis of Magmar and still held his own when fully evolved, but Gibraltar and Viper are definitely honorable mentions with wild sweeping potential. As always, make sure to subscribe to join the Sofa Army and get us to a quarter million, and I'll see you guys next time for another challenge video.